I've spent about 15 to 16 hours now on serverless functions. I did another video here on serverless functions uh, with Django, which is using digital ocean functions. And this is quite similar. This is AWS Chalice, the second or maybe the tied best way to do it. There are loads of bad options and AWS Chalice is so much better. Anyway, let's get into it. So here's the written guide. And then as I said, let's start with a joke. Why do front end developers normally eat lunch alone? The answer is below and we'll see it. Okay, so let's get started. We'll create a sample app to go through this, and then I'll show you how I integrate this with Django. Okay, we're in here in our virtual environment, and we install pip chalice botto, which we'll use. Now we should add our AWS credentials to your computer. If you haven't done this, go ahead and do it. The simplest way is to install the AWS CLI, which is really easy to do. You just have to pick one of these for your operating systems and download it, and then type in AWS configure into your terminal and you'll get something that looks like this, AW access key, and then just enter your access key ID and so on. If you don't know how to get these credentials, which are your AW access key, you can follow the guide here, which talks you through it, and then and how to do it with IAMs. It's all actually really easy, and it's a good thing to learn because AWS is just great. Be sure to attach the below permissions, which we'll be using in the policy, to your user. I've got other tutorials on that which we'll be using. And yeah, this is really simple to do. So search if you have any issues or message me. OK, so I'm assuming you've done that now. And now let's get into actually producing the Python Lambda with Chalice. So we go here. Let's get out of this terminal. And then on Chalice new project, Hello World. And it's been generated here. If we go to Hello World, you can see the app there. And this is our sample. And now we're going to copy this and paste it at the top. And then we're going to deploy it. So CD in and then go chalice deploy. So CD hello world, chalice deploy. And there we are. If we click on this, that is it. You can see how really nice AWS Chalice is compared to if you've used Lambdas before. Deployment is really, it can be really nasty, particularly, and we'll come to this when you've got requirements, which we'll cover. So there we are. And this is our Lambda ARM as well. Great. And so now what we want to do, I mentioned about stages, which we can talk about. Um, so by default, the way it works is that when you go Chalice deploy, it will deploy to a dev stage. As you can see here, it says, hello world dev. And these are essentially environments. It deploys to dev by default, but then we can also specify any other stage. And this is what we'll do later when we deploy to production using GitHub Actions. We will specify, OK, we want to have a special production stage. And let's also keep an eye on that ARN because we'll use that in the next step. So now we're going to add a Python function to call the Lambda function asynchronously. That was just synchronous, as we saw. So now we'll create a services.py in the top level here, services. Top line, fine, we'll add it in and then paste this in, this spell casting function. And this is to simulate a function that's going to last a long time, which in server terms is more than a half a second or a second. And you can see here, we need to enter in our ARN here. So copy that and enter, paste it over the top. This is the, a unique ID for our Lambda function. And then we've set it to event, which means it will be asynchronous. If you want it to be sync, change this to request response. Cool. And now let's run the services pi. And you can see it just sets the spell name and then fetches the magic spell here, which then invokes our Lambda function using Botto, which is the wrapper for AWS. And is this normally there's a nice way to run this. Okay, let's just go uh, CD out and then Python services.py. Great. And you can see it's instant. And then it re returns this request ID, which is the ID of a particular run of our Lambda function. Spell details there. Great. So that's it. And now we can use the Lambda function as a, back as a serverless background worker for any Django app. And it will just run in the background and not block the main thread of your server, which is critical because otherwise that will lock up the server and <laughs> freeze the experience for all users. Anyway, so let's add an external library now, which is also critical. And this using Chalice means that we don't need to mess around with Lambda layers. OK, so let's up, copy this and then go into our Chalice app here, paste this in, and then we're going to deploy the function. And I've actually I've deliberately added an error here to show you how to debug. So deploy again. So we need to CD back into Hello World where our Chalice app is, and then run Chalice deploy. takes a few seconds and there we go and now there will be an error here which i know of yeah internal server error occurred okay why is that well we can find that out 
by just by going chalice logs and then we look immediate logs of and we can see request is not defined that is because we're trying to use request here and we're not importing it so let's import it requests and then add it to our requirements here requests and then also install it hit install requests now if we deploy again great and then we refresh the page and uh, it's taking some time perfect i walked into a bar once it really hurt my head <laughs> great and you saw you saw there was a little delay there when it was running that's what we wanted because we've we're simulating a long running function here with this time uh, with this time sleep of two seconds and this means that in contrast when we run our services.py which let's just run it again we're going to run the same one again so cd out and then python services you see immediately asynchronous gives us the run while our service function runs in the background so i've explained about that great now let's move on to deploying to production with github actions so as I mentioned before, there's the concept of stages. So by default, Chalice will deploy to your dev. Now we want to specify a different stage, which is going to be our production stage. So copy this, and then we can go, make sure you go back into Chalice again with Hello World. Uh, by Chalice, I mean the function. And then Chalice deploy stage pod. Great. And now go on that. Just click it works. Great, and there you go. Why did the database administrator leave his wife? She had one too many relationships. One too many relationships. Very good. Okay. Um, now, so that's deployed. And again, the same thing. Any problems, you can look at the logs like that. Um, let's just run that. And I think this is a previous. Yeah, that was that was some time ago. Yeah, so no, nothing recent. But yeah, everything were, everything recent is fine. That was a while ago. Okay, now we need to set up our GitHub Actions. And I should say we need to do this once in because of one drawback of GitHub, which is that we can't see the ARN and the production URL because in, in, the, in the Actions, I haven't found a way to do it anyway. And then we'll never need to do it again. It will be done automatically with GitHub Actions. Okay, so now we set up GitHub Actions for the deployment, for deploying this function. And really easy, you just have to get your credentials, which you got earlier, and then go to your repository, create new, and then setting the secrets, new repository, and then new repository secret, and just put them in. So yeah, I assume you've done that. And then we want to create a GitHub Actions workflow, which if you're not familiar with, is a really nice way. Yeah, it's really clear, actually, once you get used to it. And the way you do that is you go here in our code base and then create a .github folder create another folder inside it called workflows and then another in there called deploy.yaml or you can call this one what you'd like do you want to add it to git yes we do and now paste in this code that we've got if you're unfamiliar with github work workflows i'll just explain it briefly so miss me it's very declarative this is a discrete name we've just entered and then on whenever we push to to main so whenever we merge domain we then will deploy on the ubuntu and then access our environment variables check out the code set up Python with version 3.11, install the packages, and then run, deploy the Lambda to production using the same commands that we've been using locally. And as you see, deploy it to the stage prod our production, and that's what our production app will be using. Great, so that's it. And as you can see here is an example, which I ran a little bit earlier, of the code running. And as you can see, it just goes through each of the steps we've just outlined, installs the required packages, and then deploys Lambda to production. And this is why I said we have to deploy it once, because you can't, it asterisks out the URL. There's probably a different way to, do it, to doing it, but yeah, simple to do it my way. And so, to add to give you one bonus here's an example way to use it that i use it with django so this is imagine this is your views and because you might be thinking okay we get the async id that's great but how, how do we actually get the result the neatest way to do that is to have your serverless function do the long running task here and then send a request with the results of that back to your django app at a particular endpoint and then you can add authorization as you'd like so that's secure so the way that i would do that is you then have you cast spell is our long running function you cast a spell you create a database object there and then in this line i haven't included it but you would then just above this send that request to your serverless function send the data and then it would start running and your you, your front end might be polling perhaps with hdmx every period to get the spell details and get the status and then update the ui once it's complete and then this would be the 
view that your endpoint would call from your serverless function from the Lambda. And then so then it finishes, Lambda finishes, and then it sends a request back here with the spell ID and then gets the spell, marks it as complete. And then this, when the front end then is polling and gets the spell, it will see, ah, it's now complete. And then you can update the UI. If you found this useful, check out my mailing list in the description below for weekly updates and more free Django content and updates on my product Photon Designer, which lets you build Django front end even faster. Besides that, I'm making loads more Django content. Here are a few more videos.